In today's big story, what I find so amazing is most of these quasi-government agencies that took taxpayer money to get off the ground is, well, there seems to be no adults in the room. It's like they have absolutely no common sense whatsoever. And if you say anything to these little sensitive snowflakes, they go crazy. How dare you? How dare you say anything to them? Well, it's time for a little mansplaining, yes? I know, it's funny. They even have a little catchphrase to describe that moment that they need a little unwanted help or advice. If we give them a little advice, they call it mansplaining. It literally kills them that an older male father figure might be able to teach them a thing or two. What a shame. I mean, something so basic as rats are bad for humans. I mean, this I mean, they should have been taught this by their parents. You know, kill rats. Kill all rats. Spare none. They, have to, they carry diseases. And we have to explain this to these little children. I mean, who in the hell raised these children? Okay. It kind of reminds me of a, a good story. I'll throw this story in there as quick as I can. It goes back to the Ohio River, the Appalachian Mountain area, 1970s. You know, they believe it or not, they even have rats down in the coal mines. Yeah, how silly is that? Rats down in the coal mines. And the coal miners of probably going back to the 50s, 60s, I know for sure in the 70s, the coal miners had this little game they played at lunchtime where they would hang a live wire. A live wire, of course, is a, a wire that's hot. Electricity, you know, it could have 220 volts on it. And the end of the wire is live, meaning if you touch that wire, you're going to get shocked. And they put a piece of meat on there, or put a piece of cheese on there, and they lower the live wire into some of these pits in the uh, coal mine and some of these areas where the rats were. And the rats would come up to the live wire and they would grab the meat or the cheese and they would get zapped with about 220 volts. It was just a little game they played at lunchtime when they're down in the coal mines. This goes back to the 1970s and I thought that was, it kind of reminded me of an old story my old man told me. As you guys know, my old man worked in the coal mine. So anyhow, not to go off on any crazy stories here, but let's get back on track. Uh, talking about like the title of this video. Let me see some of the words we have in the title. We have the uh, YouTube, Sundar, Google, Logan Paul, Dead Rats, um, Depopulation or Control population control, diseases. I mean, it all goes together. I mean, if there's some sort of agenda on social media with the, the most powerful organization in the world. I mean, there's a good argument that Google, that makes $100 billion, there's a good argument that Google might be the most powerful corporation in the world. And if there's an agenda that they want rats going through our neighborhoods and we're not allowed to disrespect them, there's a good argument that this could be involved with depopulation, population control. They want to control the population of the unwashed masses. I go on to this later, you know, Sundar makes $200 million and he probably lives in a really good neighborhood and I'm pretty sure there's no rats in his damn neighborhood, but he doesn't want us to disrespect rats. I mean, I, I'm, tying the, I'm trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and it's painting a pretty alarming picture to me. What these people have in store for us doesn't seem good for us. I mean, they literally want to put their big boot on our head while he makes $200 million. He wants to tell us what to do, what to say. I mean, they've got the speech police. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, what in the hell is wrong with these people? They are attacking us. How many times do I have to tell Google and YouTube, you're paying me $66.66 a month. You made $100 billion. Your CEO makes $200 million. And then you shit on us. You literally shit on us. And then you put chemtrails over our head. You tell us we're not allowed to disrespect rodents. And there's 95 million of us not in the labor force. I mean, do we have to remind these morons? that things are not looking very good for Americans. But do these people care? They're not even born in America. These are the numbers. 95 million Americans out of the workforce, but these people come in from God knows where, and they think they're going to tell us what we can say, what we can think, and what we can do. 
Jesus Christ, one of Americans is going to grow a pair. Grow a pair. Look up in the sky. Look what they're spraying on top of you. And now they tell you you can't even disrespect the goddamn rat that comes into your house. Jesus Christ, Americans, you're making me want to puke. Grow a pair. Tell these bastards who they are. Tell these bastards to stand down. I tell you to stand down. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but most definitely we want to document this strange time that we are living in. Almost like a social media YouTube twilight zone from hell. Yes, in this upside down world we now live in, apparently in America you can lose your income revenue by disrespecting dead rodents. Yes, I know, it's hard to believe. So, I quickly researched this, and from what I can ascertain, over in India, apparently it's not kosher to disrespect rodents. Um, well, I'm glad I live in America, or do I? Yes, I'm starting to question, is this the America I grew up in? Case in point, enter one Logan Paul. Here we see that in his latest video, he took a taser and tasered a dead rat. Yes, he showed disrespect to a dead rat. You know, those little critters that carry diseases. Well, this didn't go over well with Google and YouTube, and they took away his AdSense revenue. Yes, they took away this man's revenue, his living. And hey, I'm not a big fan of Logan Paul. He's not my thing, but uh, I have to wonder, why are they attacking this Buckeye? Yes, he is from Ohio. Yes, he does not like rats, and he doesn't like rats in his home. But do in America, should you lose your income because you disrespect a dead rodent? That's the question that I am going to ponder today. Well, unfortunately, when we dig a little deeper, we see an alarming pattern appearing. As we reported last week, Google and YouTube is employing an army of socialists, and they are attacking our free speech. We call them the anti-free speech police. They are not aware of our Constitution. So here lies the problem. Hmm. Well, this might be a good time to remind those Google and YouTube employees sitting in their little cubicles that rats and other rodents carry diseases that harm and kill humans. Oh, well, that might be it exactly. Maybe they want rats in our neighborhoods. Maybe they want to kill us off. The unwashed masses, maybe they do want us to die from diseases as long as they can live in their fine mansions in San Francisco. So that's where we're at today. Google made over a hundred billion dollars. Google made over a hundred billion dollars. Their CEO, Sundar, who was born in India, he made two hundred million dollars. I repeat, Sundar made two hundred million dollars last year. I assume that he lives in the finest neighborhood in San Francisco, the finest mansion that American money can buy, and I'm pretty sure that he has pest control men. He probably pays pest control men to take care of that pesky rat problem. So as long as there's no rats in Sundar's beautiful neighborhood in San Francisco, everything's okay. But for us unwashed masses, for everybody else in America, you're just going to have to put up with those rodents. Apparently, Logan Paul is in trouble with YouTube again. He had the audacity to taser a dead rodent. So apparently, this did not sit well with Google and YouTube. I can only assume that rats hold a special place in their hearts. And now Logan Paul loses his income revenue. So, let this be a warning, YouTubers, there's a new sheriff in town, and he just happens to like rats. So if you like your income revenue, do not disrespect dead rodents. 